Facebook's new metaverse is relentlessly horrific. On October 28th, 2021, Facebook released a video revealing their new name, Meta. In the video, Mark Zuckerberg describes Facebook's new augmented reality, a reality where you can be whatever you want to be, where you can be seen how you want to be seen, where you can escape the clutches of your atomized, transient, lonely life. Where you're in the experience, not just looking at it. And we call this the metaverse. The video was cringy and dystopian. People memed it, so it was a joke. And then we all moved on. Little did we know, we were already in the beta version of Metaverse. In 2021, it was calculated that the average American spends five to six hours a day on their phone and another four hours on their computer. That means if you sleep eight hours a day, you spend almost double the amount of your waking hours in the virtual world than you do in the real world. But what about the other six hours of your waking day? The hours we somehow manage to spend in the real world. Well, that's time that could be spent in the virtual world. That is wasted time that doesn't make Facebook money. It's a completely untapped market, which is why Facebook decided they would take things to the next level, putting all their money, all their employees, and even changing their name to take our addictions to new heights. This really shouldn't be shrugged off. Facebook's algorithms have already worked exceptionally well. Facebook is one of the main forces behind our virtual addiction in the first place. It's for this reason that the metaverse is beyond sinister, because the metaverse sets a precedent the likes of which we've never seen before. Instead of us being addicted to a drip drip of anodyne lethargic dross, we will be attaching our own consciousness, our own lives, our own businesses, our own culture, our society into the virtual world. People are getting married inside the metaverse, and I just bought a virtual shoe company that makes virtual NFTs and sneakers for the metaverse. We are currently witnessing the commodification and mechanization of human existence. But to understand this whole picture, we need to understand the person behind it all. Mark Zuckerberg. From the beginning, Zuckerberg had always shown contempt for his users. For example, just days into Facebook's launch, Zuckerberg texted a friend bragging about how he had all Facebook users' personal information and offered info about anyone at Harvard. They trust me, Zuckerberg bragged. Dumb f**ks. Whilst at the same time, Zuckerberg assured users over the years that they shouldn't be concerned about their privacy. As Facebook continued to grow, several of Zuckerberg's early collaborators accused him of stealing credit and shares in the company. Lawsuits followed and Zuckerberg paid, but none of this would get in the way of Facebook's growth. The company was now close to 2 billion users worldwide, granting Zuckerberg a net worth of over $70 billion. And as is always the case, Zuckerberg, like every other Silicon Valley titan, never gets high on his own supply. Instead, Zuckerberg values his own privacy. He lives in a secluded 750-acre mega mansion in Hawaii, which is secured by a six feet surrounding wall. And in his Palo Alto house, Zuckerberg bought four adjacent houses at the price of $30 million just to serve as an extra privacy buffer. And when Zuckerberg does go online, his webcam is covered with masking tape because Zuckerberg doesn't trust technocrats like himself. But most of the public, or in Zuckerberg's words, the dumb f**ks, allow Facebook to gather an ever-growing amount of intimate information about each of its users. Facebook knows the sites you visit, the events you attend, the vehicles you use, because Facebook is attached to so many other sites. It even knows your browsing history even when you're not using Facebook. Facebook is like a leech that's life force depends on sucking all your information and privacy away from you.